Have you ever heard of the Kojiki? The Kojiki is said to be the oldest document in Japan. It is said to have been created by Emperor Tenmu in 681 during the Nara period. It is a story of from the beginning of the world to the time when the Kojiki was written. In modern terms, it is a piece of fiction to foster belief in God. It is like a Japanese version of the Bible. The Kojiki consists of three volumes. The first is a collection of myths from various regions of Japan that make up a single story, the mythology of the gods. Incidentally, there are a number of myths that are similar to those of other countries, and it is said that Jewish people and other various peoples might come to Japan in the Past. It is possible that foreigners who felt out of place in their home countries traveled to Japan, an island in the Far East, just like the otaku gaijin of today. The second volume begins with the story of the first emperor, who was a descendant of a god and united to Japan, followed by the stories by successive emperors. It contains not only myths, but also stories based on actual historical events. The final volume then describes the achievements of the real emperors. Therefore, it can be said that the Kojiki is a book of myth, but it is also a history book. The Kojiki was written to let the people know that The emperor was a descendant of the gods in order to establish his own power. The Kojiki is truly a genuine history book. After all, history is written by the victors. The Kojiki is written in an easy to understand and friendly manner as it was written to be shared with the general public. So, you could consider it the very first sitcom in Japan. Now, I would like to briefly introduce the Kojiki. If you want to know more about Japan and Japanese people, I recommend you watch this video. Meshida jokes about Japan. Hey guys, it's Meshida. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm a comedian and I introduce funny Japanese culture. If you are interested in that, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And now I'm organizing my solo stand up comedy show in Tokyo. If you are interested in that, please check out the link below. So, see you in Tokyo. Meshida! The Kojiki begins with the separation of the world into heavenly realm and the earthly realm. Then the gods were born, one after another. The last to be born were two siblings, the elder brother Izanagi and the younger sister Izanami. They were the lowest in the order of seniority, and they were given a long spear and ordered by the gods, born before them to go make the world on earth. Power harassment was rampant even among Japanese gods. When the two thrust the long spear into the sea, a small island was formed and they decided to use it as a base from which to build a nation. When Izanami said, I have an inadequate part on my body, her elder brother Izanagi suggested, I have an extra part on my body, so I will put my extra part into your inadequate part to give birth to a nation. Even in schools for gods, sex education was inadequate. To set the mood, they decided to go around a large pillar and pretend to meet for the first time. The sister first said, Oh, what a nice man! And the elder brother replied, What a nice woman! And then they made love. The Japanese gods also loved role playing. But when they could not give birth to a nation, they consulted with their predecessors in the heavenly realm, who said they couldn't do it like that. They warned him that the woman must not be the first to speak, he must speak first. It seems that there were no feminist gods in Japan. And taking the advice of the perverted gods, whose hobby was peeping on them having sex, he did as they said, and this time he spoke first. They succeeded in giving birth to the present Awaji Island, followed by Kyushu, Shikoku, and finally Honshu. And so, today's Japan was born. The reason why 
Japan in such a strange shape is because it was created by incest. When Izanami finished giving birth to the islands, she gave birth to the gods of the nature on earth. But when she gave birth to the god of fire, she was burned and died. It is said that the dead go to Yomi no Kuni or the land of the dead. When her brother Izanagi went to the underworld to find Izanami, she told him, wait for me while I consult with the god of the underworld, but never peek while you wait. However, Izanagi, unable to wait any longer, peeked into the room. There, he found Izanami with a face like a monster. When Izanagi saw her, he ran away, saying, she's a monster! Even Japanese goddesses must have had advanced makeup skills. But Izanami was so pissed off that her attitude changed like a Japanese woman after marriage and she chased after Izanagi, but he somehow managed to escape and block the entrance to the underworld with a walk. Like Japanese divorced husbands who don't pay for the expense of bringing up their child. She uttered the curse. I will kill 1,000 people a day. In response, Izanagi replied, Then I will make 1,500 birthing houses a day. The Kojiki tells us that 1,000 humans died each day and 1,500 were born each day. Incidentally, in the year 2022, the number of births in Japan was almost 780,000 and the number of deaths was 1,500,000. Izanagi's banana must be getting tired. When the Izanagi returned to earth from the land of the dead, he washed himself in the sea to purify himself. When he washed his left eye, he gave birth to Amaterasu Omikami, the sun goddess. When he washed his right eye, he gave birth to Tsukuyomi no Mikoto, the moon god. And when he washed his nose, he gave birth to Tsutano no Mikoto, the sea god. Izanagi ordered Amaterasu to rule the heavenly realm, Tsukuyomi to rule the night, and Tsutano to rule the sea. But the troubled Sano, missing his mother, whom he had never met, abandoned his work and cried constantly. Even though, as he was born from snot, his actual mother must have been some dust, so he could never find her. Izanagi banished Sano from the world of the gods, telling him, Get out of here, before leaving heaven. Sano went to see his sister Amaterasu, the sun goddess. But there, he went on a rampage, defecated in a sacred palace, and also committed a prank at the weaving hut that killed one of the women who worked there for Amaterasu. Amaterasu was so shocked by this incident that she withdrew into a cave. Japanese goddess was also hikikomori. Today's Japanese shut-ins may just be very religious. Amaterasu, the sun goddess, had retreated into a cave, so the whole world was enveloped in darkness. Various deities gathered in front of the cave and devised a plan using their various skills to lure Amaterasu out of the cave. First, Ame no Uzume, the goddess of entertainment, danced with her breasts out, causing the other gods to laugh hysterically. The history of stripping in Japan begin with the goddess's naked dance. Then, when Amaterasu opened the cave, Ame no Uzume invited Amaterasu out, saying, A god more important than you has come and we are holding a welcome festival. Amaterasu couldn't believe that a god more important than her existed. Then, another god held up a mirror to her, and Amaterasu, who had never seen a mirror before, thought that her reflection in the mirror was another god. She leaned out of the cave. At that moment, a god, who was incredibly strong, pulled Amaterasu out of the cave. In the same way, TikTokers use mirrors to trick animals. They were able to end Amaterasu's reclusion and restore light to the world. Now, I have a good idea how to get Hikikomori out of the house. 
our government should hire a lot of professional strippers as public workers and send them to houses that have a hikikomori or shut-ins. For inflicting mental anguish on Amaterasu, her brother Sano was banished from heaven. He is said to have descended to Izumo in present-day Shimane Prefecture. There, Sano met a grieving elderly couple and their daughter. When Sano asks them why, they reply, There is a monster called the Eight-Headed, Eight-Tailed Serpent, and out of our eight daughters, seven have been eaten as sacrifices. And today, the youngest daughter, Kushinada Hime, must be sacrificed because the daughter was beautiful. Sano offered to the old couple, I will exterminate that monster if I can have her for my wife. And the old couple agreed. Gods also have adulterian motives. Susano came up with a secret plan to defeat the monster, get the eight-headed giant serpent drunk and kill it. He then had the old couple prepare the sake and he was able to kill the eight-forked serpent where it fell asleep drunk, just as they had planned. Japanese monsters also had a culture of getting drunk and sleeping on the streets. It is said that from the belly of the slain serpent came the sword of Kusanagi. This sword, along with a mirror used to make Amaterasu come out of her cave, and a comma-shaped bead that was worn by Ameno Uzume, the god of the performing arts who did a strip dance, are said to be the three sacred weapons of the emperor's family and are regarded as a proof of the emperor's status. Even today, when a new emperor comes into power, a ceremony is held to pass on the three sacred artifacts. But the three sacred artifacts must not be seen, not even by the emperor. It is said that anyone who looks at the three sacred artifacts will have a bad luck. Maybe Emperor Showa snuck a peek at them before the war. Therefore, Sano and Kushinada Hime built a palace on Earth, had children and continued to live in Izumo for generations. The story then turns to one of Sano's sixth-generation descendants, Onamuji. Onamuji had many brothers, but they were all mean and bullied him. So when he married a beautiful woman, his brothers were furious and tried to kill him. So Onamuji went to his ancestor, Sano, for help. Being related to a god means you can consult your great-great-great-great-grandfather. Although he was supposed to get advice, Onamuji fell in love at first sight with Suseri Bime, a recent daughter of Susanoo, and proposed to her as soon as they met. However, Onamuji was already a married man. Both incest and adultery were common among the Japanese gods. Sano then gave him various trials, saying, I will test you to see if you are the right man for my daughter. When Onamuji managed to overcome those trials, he was accepted by Sano and given the daughter's hand in marriage. He was told by Sano, From this day forward, you shall be Lord of the Earth. And as a Lord of the Earth, he was given the name Okuninushi. So he went to consult with Sano about his marriage. He fell in love with another woman and married her instead. This is the roots of the current Japanese practices of love. When a person of the opposite sex who has a partner asks for advice on love, you have a chance to steal them away. Thanks to Okuninushi, Izumo was flourishing. Seeing the situation from the heavenly realm, Amaterasu became jealous and said, It's not right that a descendant of Susanoo should rule the earthly world. She sent Takemi Kazuchi, a warrior god, to earth to threaten Okuninushi and bring the land of Izumo to its knees. No matter which country you live in, the rich never do their own fighting. Okuninushi offered to cede control over the land on Earth in exchange for a great shrine in Izumo being built. 
This is a present day Izumo Taisha Shrine in Shimane. This episode is said to represent the subjugation of the great power in Izumo at that time by the Yamato dynasty, descendants of the emperors. The Yamato dynasty would later unify Japan. Many bloodthirsty scenes must have been cut from the Kojiki here, like where anime is adapted for American television. Anyway, the Ise Grand Shrine in Mie worships Amaterasu, and it's the highest ranking shrine in Japan now. Meshido. The earthly world was then ruled by Ninigi, grandson of Amaterasu. Ninigi descended to earth and fell in love at first sight with the most beautiful woman of all, Konohana Sakuyahime. Ninigi fell in love at first sight and asked her to marry him, but her father proposed that Ninigi take both her and her sister, Iwanagahime, as his brides. But Ninigi refused because Iwanagahime was ugly. Her father then angrily said, the point is that they are to be married as a set. The beautiful daughter means your life will flourish like a blooming flower, and the ugly daughter would provide life as unshakable as a rock. As a result of rejecting the ugly daughter, Ninigi's offspring flourished but was short-lived. It is said that this was because when the Kojiki was written, emperors had a short lives, so it lays the blame on God. But to say that the emperor's lifespan was shortened as a result of discrimination against ugly people seems like a negative campaign to me. This can also be said to be a message from God for choosing a marriage partner. If you choose a partner based solely on beauty, your marriage will be short-lived. The secret of a long marriage is how much you can get used to an ugly face. Meshido. Ninigi and Konohana Sakuyahime married and had children, and the great grandson of Ninigi is said to be Emperor Jimu, the first emperor of Japan. Amaterasu, the sun goddess, was born from the left eye of Izanagi, who created this world. Her grandson Ninigi came down to earth, and his descendant is Emperor Jimu. The emperors, our country, are descendants of the I discharge of a god. And after the appearance of Emperor Jimu, how did the Kojiki explain how the descendants of the Emperor ruled Japan? The story is mixed with historical facts. February 11, 660 BC, when Emperor Jimu ascended to the throne, is now the National Foundation Day of Japan. Yes, the National Foundation Day of Japan is based on a fantasy story, the same as Christmas. Anyway, Emperor Jim's wife's parents are interesting. Her father fell in love with her beautiful mother, but he was shy, so he turned into a ball. And when her mother was shitting, he shot himself into her shitty hole. And then she was surprised and pulled out the ball. Then he turned back to a human and proposed to her, and she accepted it. Japanese goddesses also crazy about a the story of Yamato Takeru, the son of the 12th emperor Keiko, is also well known. In this part, the story is more like fiction, written on the basis of historical fact than a myth. Yamato Takeru was a crazy man, and his father, the emperor, fearing his craziness, ordered Yamato Takeru to defeat the tribes throughout Japan. And so, on his expedition, Yamato Takeru conquered the Japanese tribes and thus ensure the position of the emperor. In actual fact, before the time when the position of the emperor was firmly established, there were tribes in various regions that didn't follow the emperor, and strong soldiers subdued those regions and established the emperor's position. Even now, the emperor is mostly just a figure head. And after that, the Kojiki only describes the achievements of successive emperors in order from the second to third volumes. Perhaps the second and third volumes lost quality because of the effort put into the mythological stories in the first volume. If this were Disney, we would be on Star Wars. I mean, Kojiki, 
the last gods, and Kojiki, the rise of Amaterasu, and Izanagi and Izanami would be gay. Beshido. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and please give me super thanks. And please check out my Patreon page too. And if you are in Tokyo, please come to my solo stand-up comedy show. So, see you soon. Bye-bye.